Well, we're back in the kitchen and we have with us a guest, a frequent guest and a great friend of the show, Michael Dragu. And hey, this hey. is this one's uh, kind of interesting. It's it's simple and it's complex. And it's, it's called uh, to dress a dish of mushrooms. Mushrooms. Sounds rumps. great. <laughs> Thanks for joining us today. Okay, number one, mushrooms. Yep. She means, of course, mushrooms. But mushrooms, uh, this is right. from the late 1600s, uh, so they may have called them that. And this is from Martha Washington's yes. Book of Cookery. Yep. And this actually is a, originally was a manuscript book that she had in her possession, Martha Washington. When she married her first husband, Daniel Custis, uh, he gave her this cookbook, passed down in his family, um, as a wedding gift. A lot of the recipes from Martha Washington's cookbook come from the 17th century, yes. so they're just maybe even old-fashioned for the 18th century. Yes. Uh, and you, you know, the style of writing is different. Right, the phrasing right. is different. Right. So they're 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 a fun book, and there's a great book. Um, there's a version of it uh, that you can find that's called Martha Washington's Book of Cookery. It's uh, done by um, Karen Hess, and she's a, a modern food historian. She does a tremendous job in this cookbook of interpreting these very difficult to interpret recipes. And she doesn't modernize them. She doesn't make them uh, right. right for uh, American tastes. She explains what the phrase is, what the obscure words meant. So excellent book. I definitely recommend it if you're interested in 17th and 18th century cooking. Definitely go to check it out on Amazon. You will find it'll be a wonderful book. Uh, this one is a ragu. Right of it is no uh, no 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 it's I, not the, it's it's a what what did she call it again it is it's we are just dressing uh, yes we're gonna mushrooms. we're gonna cook some mushrooms and we're gonna add some things to it to make okay. them a, a pleasant and side uh, dish. so she mentions in this recipe like uh, preparing these mushrooms cutting the red out of them and all kinds of things well we don't know if these are dried mushrooms out of the larder if they are fresh we don't know what types varieties or sizes if they're being we just don't know why she's doing that. She's removing the gills sometimes. She's mm -hmm. she's peeling them sometimes. I purchased uh, several different varieties of, of from the local um, market. Market, and yeah. um, I'm I'm going to use those. That's what everybody else can find. Okay, wonderful. So regular market mushrooms. Uh, how do we get started with this? Um, I've already washed them. I've uh, trimmed them up a little bit, and I'm going to cut them in half. She asks that we cook them, just fry them in the pan. Okay, and uh, that's what we're going to start doing. Okay, so we're cooking with uh, our brazier with, with charcoal right here in the kitchen. Now, obviously, you cannot do this as a, as a safety issue. Uh, in the 18th century and in this situation, the doors are open, the windows are open to carry all the, the smoke away. I mean, normally we, we cook over here uh, at the hearth. And the hearth won't draw unless air can come into the building anyway. And very frequently in the 18th century, they cooked over, whoops, they cooked over uh, little braziers just like this in their kitchen. And it was a very frequent kind of a situation. Safety wise, you can't do this. Uh, you're obviously just gonna cook it over your regular stove at home, or you're gonna cook outside uh, like they might have done in the 18th century in a summer kitchen. Yeah. In her original recipe, she's actually very worried about all the moisture coming out of these mushrooms and them filling it up and kind of stewing them. Right. And these particular mushrooms, we are not having that problem. She actually says, keep drawing the water off. Yep. If water builds up in the pan, water is not building up in the pan. So we're just we have a, basically yes. frying them up. We have spirited coal, so we're steaming as soon as they... Okay. But, yeah. So yeah, it's the, end, the end effects can be the same. Yeah. Right. If you'd hand me that piece well, of onion, onion just one of the pieces, to just pop there it in. Go. Yep. This onion is just adding a little extra flavor. It's not part of the finished dish. If you want to add the salt uh, okay. and pepper, and uh, just to satisfy the regular viewers, a little nutmeg. No, please. nutmeg. She calls for nutmeg in this recipe. <laughs> no, I wouldn't so, add it if she didn't call for it. So we have some nutmeg, yep. which will definitely make this 18th century. Okay, our next step is to get the onions out and then just uh, slowly add okay, the cream. So in. we're gonna add some cream. Yep. We're just gonna let her thicken. Thank you. And then just to your taste, a little parsley. A little parsley. Yeah. Well, and I just coarsely chopped it. I'm not the biggest fan of parsley, but. Uh, and then just put a little in. That's good. There we go. Looks great. We're just gonna let that slowly simmer. Imagine this with uh, chanterelles or morels. You know, you could be mm -hmm. very specific. I've, I've, I've got four different kinds here, but. 
And when I was test driving this, I've done this a couple times for demonstrations. Um, I just I let it go until it gets a little thick. Sometimes I've added uh, some uh, corn flour, some uh, corn starch. Um, oh, um, I know, but I, uh, it depends on the weather and how much time I am, I've got. But it's a it's a great side for any kind of meat. I last time I did it, I did it with pork chops on the side, and it was just wonderful. This looks delicious. Let's uh, let's go ahead and serve this up. What Sounds do you think? good. Thank you. Here's our finished dish. Okay, well, uh, I'll, I, I want to see you eat a little bit. Yeah, first. I'm going to because I love this. It doesn't have fish in it. That's why I love it. There you go. Wonderful. It is. It really is. Could use a little more nutmeg, I think. <laughs> Just mm. the right amount of salt. Yep. I might add a little pepper to it even, add a little more, but a little more, yep. wow, super flavors. Um, really very quick and simple yep. to create. Um, yeah, the whole thing is 15 or 20 minutes on the stove. Right. For vegetarians out there, you could do this with almond milk, uh, even in the time period with the milk or the cream, uh, using, th this could be a Lenten dish uh, in the time period. So I, I, actually it's a, quite a versatile dish. Wonderful, wonderful flavors. Thank you so much for bringing this particular yeah. one to us. It's disappearing before our eyes. I know, so. it's, uh, it's going <laughs> quick. Uh, <laughs> thank you so much though for bringing this particular one and yes, it, it's been great. <laughs> so I really want to thank everyone out there for all of your tremendous yeah. support uh, that you do when you, you know, ask questions or there's been so much sharing on the channel yeah. lately and that it's growing the channel like crazy. Crazy. So you guys are doing that, uh, and I really want to thank you for you know what you're doing for the channel and spreading the word of what we're doing here. We have a lot of fun, and you know we yes, learn we, a lot as yes, we're doing we do. it, and apparently you guys are enjoying it too. So thank you so much for mm. your amazing support, and I want to thank you for coming along with us as we savor the flavors and the aromas of the 18th century.